Hello, Wagwan. Welcome to Design to Win. I'm your host, C. Ruth Taylor, and this is a show where we give you the roadmap to win at life with a little Caribbean flavor. Coming up in today's show, we're going to be looking at helping our children to win, especially in COVID-19 as this pandemic continues into its second year. We know many of our children are struggling and the teachers are struggling, but we want to focus on helping teens to win. And today my special guest is Dr. Louise Malcolm Daly. She's the author of the book Re's Journey and it's all about equipping our teens to win. She has a doctorate in education. She is an educational psychologist. She worked at the University of the West Indies. She is originally from Jamaica but now living in the Cayman Islands. She is uh, well skilled in this area. She's also a counselor. She has training in psychology. She went to the University of Toronto and uh, she is a trained teacher like myself and we both went to the Michael. <laughs> Dr. Malcolm believes that teens should complete their schooling dropping out should not be an option. Hence, much time should be spent counseling and identifying strategies to help teens to accept that their struggles, a willingness to take more responsibility for their behaviors and apply self-management skills to help them to win. And so today, I believe that this interview is timely and many parents and teenagers, counselors and anybody in the educational system will benefit from it. So, Dr. Malcolm, welcome to the show. Thank you and thanks for inviting me. It's a privilege to have you. We like to start at our show by asking you something that you love about your homeland or about where you're currently living. So since you're from Jamaica, living in Cayman, can you tell me what's your favorite thing about Jamaica and the Cayman Islands? Oh, yes. For Jamaica, it's the opportunities for socialization and the cultural appreciation. You know, like going home and we have a nice get together, whether it's on the beach or in a family member's house and just talk about stuff, just about anything. It is so relaxing, so enjoyable. For Cayman Islands, certainly it's all about the feeling of safety and security. Like at nights I can walk how many miles, just about what I like to walk. On the beach or on the road, I can jog alone and I feel safe. So those are two, two lovely things about these beautiful Caribbean islands. Awesome, I love it. I have never visited the Cayman Islands but I have lots of friends there. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about your book. I love the subtitle, especially as it relates to helping teens to win. It says, Re's Journey, a teen story of struggles, self-management and success. Why did you write that book? And uh, just tell us a little bit more about it. Okay. Now, after working for over 30 years in the area of psychological evaluation and counseling, I recognize that some teens are just dropping out of school when there's no need to do so. They are dropping out because of different reasons, including inattention. Inattention may be just family issues. So there's difficulty focusing on the work, their academic work, or it could be what we call ADHD. Some people call it hyper, but I like to say attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Other things like peer pressure, poverty. And so I was motivated to say to teens, you don't have to drop out. 
you don't have to underperform. You can use self-management skills and get by. I want to say also that teens, especially boys, they are, the dropout rate is higher than girls. And so I decided that it's important to take a boy as a role model. And so it's called Ree's journey. And re really means asking, asking, our, asking our teens to reflect on their education and encourage them to move up. That is how the name Re came about. More importantly, I recognize that girls are better readers or they are more interesting in, interested to read than boys. And so boys will listen or will read about another boy's story. And so I've written, that is why I've written it in a story format. A little bit more about the text. It's not just for Caribbean readers. It's for those in the Caribbean diaspora, United Kingdom, Canada, United States. Okay, now self-management. Why self-management? That's a key issue in the text. Teens are at this stage of development, puberty, where they want to manage a lot of stuff for self. For example, they manage their wardrobe. They want to manage their wardrobe. How do I dress? How do I look? Where do I go? They want to manage who they are friends with. Who should they pair with? And the issue of peer pressure comes in there. And People think about peer pressure sometimes in a negative way, but can be positive. And then the schooling component, I'm very, very big on schooling, very important. I believe that children should receive an education, teens should receive an education and do not drop out of school. So the schooling component about working, listening to teachers, pep talk, I call it, and modeling peers who demonstrate positive behaviors, for example, positive in the sense that they adhere to the school policy, and also knowing when to visit a counselor in terms of having a challenge, or if they have the benefit of an educational psychologist to see um, to seek help from the educational psychologist also. I want to say though, at this point, others may listeners may be wondering, so what is the self-management skills? They are just simple activities, simple activities that will help a teen to complete the task of daily living independently or with support. Let's look at some of them. For example, completing homework in a quiet place but not in bed. That has to do with time management. So time management can be an important self-management skill, and it is for a teen, it is. So they don't spend more time on leisure and less time on homework. Another one, I will not allow, and this is in my book, I will not allow the TV or radio or computer or telephone to distract me when completing homework. The underlying self-management skill there is monitoring or self-monitoring. It's very important for teens to recognize that they need to monitor their behavior 
if they must achieve what they set out to achieve. Another simple activity. I will keep all my belongings in one place. So in the mornings, it's easy to pick up your bag of books, pick up your belongings and leave for school so you can arrive on time and not searching all over for stuff. Another one, I will observe family times for getting in and out of bed, time management skills. And also, you know, I'll work until a task is complete. Very important time management skill. Another one, I will wait my turn to speak and not blurt out answers. Very important in terms of self-management. It's a social skill that's very necessary. Self-management on the line there is, is the self-management skills, although it is a social skill. Or I will practice being polite to my classmates and teachers another self-management skill. So they may be simple things, but very vital for everyday living. Thank you so much, Doc. Um, sounds really good, these self-management skills. And I believe they're needed no more than ever. You talk mm -hmm. about, I will not allow myself to be distracted. Adults mm -hmm. need. <laughs> these self-management skills as well because we're in an age of distraction but yeah. right now it is even more difficult than ever and the need to self-management is needed more than ever when you have your classes online your parents may not be there you can turn off the zoom feature the, the video feature <laughs> You can sign yourself in, but you're not necessarily there. And the teacher, I, I heard a university lecturer complaining that she has difficulty even getting the students to respond and they're at the higher level. So mm -hmm. what can we practically do to help the students at this time to develop these self-management skills in this online learning environment and in this pandemic? Give us some practical tips. What can we do to help them to develop these wonderful skills that you're talking about so that they can succeed in school and in life? I agree with you that it's not an easy task. It's new and adjustments take time, but it's a reality of life. And COVID has taught us that life doesn't have to be one way all the time in order for us to succeed. First, I believe that all students, as best as possible, they should stick to their routine. Once they stick to that routine, it is easier to cope. For example, just responding promptly to their alarm clock. This is the time I would normally get up if I'm to take the bus or if I am to walk to school, then try and get up at that time. Promptly to their alarm clock by saying, this is the time I should be in class. I am not going to put something else on to pretend as if I'm there while I'm not there. So keep all the routine as much as possible, maintain the regular routine. And then there is the issue of self-examination. Okay, so what did I achieve? Counselors and significant others like parents and the teachers. You know, what did I achieve today? Did I accomplish what I'm supposed to do? And I just don't want to forget in terms of teachers, 
encourage teachers to continue their pep talks with the class or with their students. Pep talks really, they are not a part of the lesson, but they are so much, they, they play a vital role in motivating students. So I strongly believe that teachers should continue their pep talks with students. For example, when we say pep talks with students, we are talking about teachers encouraging students. Pep talks, they are not really a part of the lesson, but they help. For example, teachers encouraging students how to study a particular lesson, a particular topic. Teachers encouraging students to maintain healthy peer relationship. Teachers encouraging students to make appropriate use of social media. So pep talks like those from the teachers can help. So the days of stepping in and beginning to do a lecture should not be. The teachers should really do something else before. In other words, meet the needs of students before because students are hurting, students are worried, students are making adjustments. So teachers pep talk, you know, how to improve your study skills. Did you have a good day? What is it, uh, what else can I do to help you? All those are important and will help students to develop strong self-management skills. Then the issue of peers, peers, so very important in terms of in these COVID times, the, you, we don't want our students to end up with the wrong peer relationship. When I say wrong peer, I mean negative peer relationship. And the association, the socialization is so important during these COVID times. So that is an issue where parents and teachers and counselors encourage the child or the student or the teen to develop healthy peer relationship through modeling. Modeling, for example, time management skills, modeling how to follow through on instructions until a task is complete, modeling social skills, modeling study skills, modeling how to improve their self-esteem. And this is a time to when studies doesn't have to be as difficult because students can liaise with, through technology with other students. So technology here can be used in a positive way. And then there's always counseling. Always counseling where the counselor can help, where the school psychologist or educational psychologist can help. And a Zoom meeting with a psychologist or counselor, group dynamics can be beneficial. Wow, those are some wonderful tips and practical. So first of all, try to develop a routine or yes. pretend as if you, you have that routine of going to school by mm -hmm. seven thirty, ending by two o'clock. Yes. Try to stick to that. It's just that the medium has changed. Uh, the teacher should give the pep talks and they can bring the counselors in to help yes. the students. And I think one that can help with both the teachers and the parents is that same positive reinforcement. <laughs> yes. 
you we can help them by giving them some mm -hmm. rewards so we have learned so much in this little time and we're almost out of time so i'm going to ask you doc i know your book is on amazon Re's mm -hmm. journey and i love the fact that it's using a male as the example but for parents listening and others because this program is primarily aired in the diaspora the uk the united kingdom and the usa it's not necessarily streamed in the caribbean how can we get in touch with you and and learn more from you if listening and they need more help okay you can get in touch with me through my wonderful publisher or you can get in touch with me at dr dal 70 mal at gmail.com thank you so much doc and i i can tell you listeners i helped her to publish this book <laughs> and going through it i enjoyed the story watching um Re's development and uh, you will find practical tips uh, to help our students to win in this difficult time so we want to thank dr malcolm for coming and as we close out the show put your hand over your heart and say with me our pledge to win there's greatness in me it's possible to live my dreams no matter how bad it is or how bad it gets i'm going to make it with faith courage and consistent action i'm going to make it it's not over until i win tough for now until next time Thank you.